Three, two, one. Okay, hopefully that'll line up, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Too Many Movies. I'm your host, Hal. Nope, I'm going to start over because that's not the actual intro. Fuck. We're very professional here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Hello and welcome to Too Many Movies, the podcast where we talk about DVDs, Blu-rays, and even the occasional VHS tape. I'm your host, Hal, and with me today is a very special guest who I will introduce even though I said their name already. Puff, introduce yourself. Hey guys, I'm Puff. I'm an editor for uh, Shaperless Productions. I am also a shit poster on Twitter, so if you want to follow me on my art accounts, once, uh, sorry, my brain's right. Um, if you want to follow me at my art account, one tough platform, at my shit poster account called the Real 100 Gex, spelled with an X because Gex is, um, is based. You can follow me there. Um, so yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll also have an opportunity for you to plug your shit at the end too. Anyway, okay. Uh, so let's uh, jump right into our first movie, uh, a movie that we both saw. Uh, I assumed you watched it in a theater. I watched it sailing the high seas. Wink, <laughs> wink. <laughs> um, uh, so the recent uh, Jordan Peele movie, Nope. We both watched it. And yeah. I want to know, Puff, what is your experience with uh, Jordan Peele's other movies, Get Out and Us? Um, um, I yeah. assume you've seen them. Oh, yeah, I've seen both. I, I like Jordan Peele. Um even though I didn't care much for us. Um, but yeah, no, um, I watched Get Out shortly before, I think, the, um, no, actually, no. I'm trying to remember exactly when I watched it. I remember I borrowed it from the li- the library. I borrowed it from okay. the library, and so I watched it that way, because, uh, you know, I heard people talking about it on Tumblr. Yes, I was a little Tumblr gremlin back then. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> yo, I need to check this out. This seems sick. I think it was shortly after I watched Ghost in the Shell. So yeah, 2017. Um, okay. Yeah, I unfortunately saw Ghost in the Shell in theaters instead of Get Out. Uh, but, I mean, good luck convincing my mom to pay for my horror movie ticket. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I thought you meant, like, uh, the original Ghost in the no, Shell. No, unfortunately <laughs> not. I saw uh, that Ghost the in the Shell one. in theaters. <laughs> I don't really regret it, though, because the cinematography was really pretty, and when you watched it in 3D, there was, like, a really good shot where they really utilized that 3D well, but that's besides mm. the point. Get Out's yeah. an actually good movie, in my opinion. Um, yeah. It I, is better than Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, I think it deserved its writing Oscar. Um, I think it did a lot for the horror genre, although I have mixed feelings of the corporate response from it spawning Mm -hmm. a bunch of horror movies that are focused on black trauma rather than just on black characters which i think yeah get out kind of has a mesh of both um and then us i saw recently uh i watched it on i think hbo max and i just thought it was all right um, there were elements that were really good about it, but it was definitely a weaker film overall because I think it was a little too lofty with what it was trying, uh, to convey with its message. And it just yeah. kind of didn't work at the end of it. Um, but yeah, overall, yeah. I really, oh yeah, and also if you want to talk about overall Jordan Peele's work, I was also a big fan of Key and Peele, so... <laughs> And I oh, really, yeah. I love, 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 like, I don't think this is directed by Jordan Peele, but I love Keanu. It is... It's not, but I, yeah, so that's, like, their, uh, yeah. that was, like, kind of their movie together. Yeah, yeah the comedy, no, I don't, yeah, I don't think movie he together, it. and it's, like, I think it came out a little bit before Get Out, but I love Keanu. It's basically, like, John Wick, but if John Wick was just a normal guy wanting his cat back... Okay. It's 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 got- honestly incredibly funny, and I really yeah. enjoy it a lot. Uh, and it's worth checking out if you haven't seen it. I should watch it. I mean, yeah, I, uh, it's funny because when I posted my Nope review on Letterboxd, uh, somebody had commented being like, "Oh, have you seen Keanu?" And I'm like, "No, I haven't." So I, I should probably add it to the watch yeah, list. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, Keanu um, kind of hits a soft spot. I just want to talk a little yeah. bit longer, because yeah, I sure. saw the trailer right after my cat died, and so I kind of, like, oh. 
and it connected with that because someone killed my cat. I know that's really dark, oh. right? But yeah, and so oh, I was geez. like, because it kind of like connected with my feeling of this is what I do for my cat. So, right. I, again, but it's also a comedy. So yeah, so it's well, kind of like has some sentimental value too. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, going back on what you said about us, um, well, I guess with both Peel movies, I have not truly been a fan of Jordan Peel as of yet. I did like this movie a lot. I think this is the first movie of his I actually really enjoyed. Um, I did like the concept of Get Out. I'm not too keen on the whole like execution of it all, just because it just seems like uh, another horror movie to me. But it, I mean, like you said, it is better than Us. Us is like one of those movies where it's uh, putting like its allegories and symbolism ahead of its narrative, and I can't stand when movies do that. Uh, a lot of it reminded of, especially in Us, it reminded me of movies like Mother and Men, where like it's just banking on having like such a profound message, but like it just doesn't really do much in the story department. And so that's one thing I was kind of iffy on looking forward to Nope, just being like, Oh, is this going to be another one of those? But it really wasn't. <clears throat> I, I, I really did enjoy Nope. Like I, I really want to watch it again. In fact, like I feel like I could. Oh yeah. No, for me with Nope, I definitely at some point, cause the movie theater near me tickets are like five dollars there's no reason for me not to want to go see it again right uh yes because, so the reason yeah. i didn't see it in theaters is because i'm just so busy with other things uh i mean wink wink i did see it in theaters legally of course <laughs> um <laughs> with the slot lights machine guy uh but it is one where like i definitely do need to see it again because there's a lot i didn't understand the first time around but it's one where like I didn't understand it, but I want to understand it. Like I, yeah. I want to, I want to learn more about what what I had just seen. I mean, a lot of it was basic. You know, you get the whole story of. I mean, the whole thing is just uh, OJ and M. What is it? Emerald? Yeah, M are like trying to just take a picture of this UFO, which I think is really cool. Like it's not even like they're trying to stop this weird phenomenon. They just want to take a picture of it. Like yeah that that's really cool that's kind of funny actually like that's the grand story of the movie is just trying to take a picture of it yeah no definitely um i really like the whole thing and then how other people kind of are also getting wind of that trend like uh their it guy who was so excited over seeing a yeah. ufo that he breaks the law for a chance to possibly see that ufo and eventually helps them try and get uh that picture of it yeah, and it's and it's really cool because they do barely show the creature. Like you're not even really sure what it is you're even looking at half the time because it's oh, just Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> just the way it's filmed and I I appreciate that. I sometimes get annoyed by like the whole don't show as much of the creature as possible, but like here it works. Yeah, no. Like, and I still appreciate that they show you what it looks like in the end, you know? Yeah. Like, that, that's even, really what helps. And even then, I still don't even understand what I'm looking at half the time <laughs> when it's, like, it's like right there. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's intentional. Like, you're just, like, you can't even comprehend what you're looking at. Yeah, um, definitely. I actually do want to mention, um, if it's all right for me to just talk about it this early on, I love Jane Jacket's design. That's what uh, fans are calling uh, the alien. So that's what it's called. It's called yeah, Jean they, Jacket. Yeah, people are just okay. calling it Jane Jacket because that's what they uh, OJ calls it at the end. Okay. Uh, and, like, I just think it's just a pretty design. Like, it, like, yeah. clusters down, but then it furls itself out like giant sails and it's like so pretty but also horrifying it's almost eldritch in its design yeah it's very eldritch and i i really love that a lot i also want to mention that when i was watching this with my girlfriend when you were first seeing the hints of it my girlfriend was whispering over to me and she's like i think it's just gonna be a giant cowboy hat and i was <laughs> laughing <laughs> it almost was it almost looked like it for a while i was yeah. absolutely convinced that it could possibly be a giant cowboy ca yeah. hat and that would have been such a funny punchline to it all it would have been yeah 
Yeah, I agree. I think it is like a very cool design. Again, like I can't even comprehend what I'm looking at half the time because it's just like this weird sail. It, it, it's hard to explain. It looks like a. I, I genuinely don't know how to explain it. It looks like. I don't know if you remember in Attack of the Clones when Count Dooku is escaping and his spaceship has like a weird parachute yeah. attached to it. Like that's what it looks like to See, me. See, you know what it reminds me of is the sails from Pledge. You know the sails on the um, how do I put it? Sorry, the sails on the ships in Pre- Treasure Planet. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah. It that, kind of reminds that. me of those. Like it just yeah. looks like sails. Yeah, exactly. It's just like these weird sails. It's it's weird but it's cool like it's it's a design i haven't seen often for an alien spaceship slash alien creature so it was really cool i remember before i had seen this i remember you uh dming me saying like this really this movie like really freaked you out and i'm curious like I think I know which scene you're talking about, but I'm curious to know, like, what scene were you yeah. talking about? There's actually two scenes, and they kind of coincide with each other. Um, of course, there's the one that you're thinking of, the scene where Jean Jacket eats the whole um, of, like, the people yeah. who are there to see it. That image yeah. of them being eaten alive is, like, burned into my eyes. I close my eyes, and I see it, it is... It yeah. is well, that scene is so well done. I, I felt so much fear, because, like, that's, like, I, I've talked about this before, like, how, like, or I, how this went into one of my primal fears, even if it would never happen to me. And that's and, being eaten alive. Yeah, that is one of them, actually. Like, yeah. literally, because, like, what do you do in that situation? You are alive, and you're being digested you're being dissolved by yeah. some creature that's horrifying because you just can't help but think of how painful that must feel the like the only reason the acid in your stomach doesn't eat through is because of the mucus lining the inside of it because otherwise it would just eat you alive like that's that's how powerful the stomach's acid is so that just oh that gives me the shivers i hate yeah. it yeah it was really but, cool because like yeah. at first i thought it was just like a standard like abduction yeah. but then i think it was like after the scene happened uh one of the characters had said like oh they were eaten and i'm just like oh that is hor- horrifying yeah <laughs> like, so like like no because it looks like that at first but then you see the scene of them in its fucking throat yeah and then that's it's like in when like you a know. weird alien throat yeah and that's like yeah. when you know like oh, wait the fu- this isn't an alien ship this is an alien yeah, and that an that's alien. that's uh, that just subverts the whole like genre that it was implying to be on its head. Um, this is an abduction. This is Vor. Yeah. Then, <laughs> like, hey, released kind of before Vor Day. Quite fitting, actually. Um, oh. <laughs> anyways. Awesome. Um, but no, the scene that really got to me uh, was the Gordy scene. Oh, yeah. The Gordy yeah. scene was the scene. I've never wanted to scream in a theater, but I nearly screamed there. I felt the urge, the want to scream, and I've never felt that towards a horror movie before, and I actively seek out shit like guinea pig. Yeah. And See? Yeah. No, you go ahead. Uh, like, the thing that gets me the most is how real that part was. Like, that could mm-hmm. happen. It yes. was so grounded in it. And then the constant perspective of basically for a long series of shots of just focusing from the perspective of... I, his name's Stephen Yoon, right? The uh, the, the actor. actor's name is Stephen Yoon. I think yeah. the, character's, the character's name is Jupe. Yeah, Jupe. Like, Jupe's perspective as a little kid under that table hiding from Gordy as Gordy is attacking and mauling his co-stars on that show and how sudden it started and how horrifying that is and then the real kicker at the end of it I'm assuming this is a spoilers review I mean yeah we've already gone into like spoilers already but it's fine so sorry where keep going yeah where Gordy is climbing under the table where uh that kid is and he reaches his hand out to fist bump him with his bloody hands and blood smeared all over his face and then getting suddenly shot yeah that is 
absolutely terrifying. And I think in some ways that reflects in him when he grows up trying to quote unquote befriend Jean Jacket because he thinks in that moment that it was actually friendly to him because Mm -hmm. he was good to Gordy rather than something that Gordy was being trained to do. And that just gets me. I think about it a lot and I only just watched the movie because it was just such an expertly crafted piece of horror in that scene. Yeah. One of my favorite aspects of that kind of subplot the whole gordy thing is early on when uh jupe is like explaining the snl skit to uh oj and m and how he's just like he's like explaining like how hilarious the skit is and then for like a split second it like flashes to him as a kid underneath the table and then it goes back to him in current time explaining it and he just goes ah never mind but it's really funny so like Th- that in the editing is showing like it's like him like remembering for a split second like no it wasn't funny it was actually really traumatic but then he just is just like ah never mind whatever yeah exactly i feel it, like it's some of his it's way- editing like that yeah. that i love i love subtle edits like that that kind of like add on to how a character is feeling yeah no exactly and like i think for him chasing that spectacle that was that moment uh, was, like, his way of coping with the trauma that happened to him. If he just treated it as some grand thing that just happened to happen, then it wouldn't bother him as much, which is why he holds so much memorabilia of that moment. Yeah. Is because if he treats it like a commodity to be consumed, then maybe it won't feel as real to him. Yeah. See, I... I- I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I think maybe this is why, like, I ha- I probably like this the m- movie the most out of the Jordan Peele movies I've seen is because I'm still trying to figure out what it all means. Yeah. So, like, it's... Because I know it has something to do with, like, uh, spectacle and, like, trying to, like, rationalize how us, how us humans kind of, like, take spectacle and how we kind of glamorize it, even though it can be quite uh, fucked up. So it's yeah. just, it, it's just, it's co- coming from that angle, but I like how it's still able to feel very grounded in that sense because we only get like a handful of characters. In this oh movie. yeah. No, I think, uh, it managed, it manages to balance being a critique of our obsession with, uh, spectacle and consumption, um, to also being just a solid alien horror flick. Like, it manages to do both rather than overly focusing on some kind of allegory or thinking of the allegory secondhand as something to just throw over it to make it deeper. It it balances the two very well. Which is what... uh, That was kind of my main problem with Us in that it was putting its allegory ahead of the story because it was like, oh, it had like critiques of uh, the haves and the have nots and uh, the rich versus the poor, you know, because you have the people on the surface world and you have the clones underneath underground. But then it's like, when you think about that movie logically, it's just like, okay, there's like a series of tunnels underneath all of America with just clones acting out how we act out. It's it, it yeah, like raises exactly. too many questions. It, just, it doesn't make sense within the world yeah, that it's in. Exactly. Whereas, like here, it's just an alien. I mean, it's more than that, but it's like it's an alien, and the and the, our characters just want to take a picture of it. It's like that's the base story, and that I can comprehend. Like that, I can understand. It's like okay, I get that. So, and I I just I just like how it's executed, and I like watching these characters try and figure this out um i also this is the first time this has ever happened i actually really liked the akira reference towards the end yeah no i actually kind of laughed in the theater with the akira reference but i think that's just because it felt so natural in the scene of it that you didn't even think for a second like she does the slide and then you're like wait this is an Akira reference rather than, oh, she starts the slide and you're like, oh, yeah, they're making an obvious Akira reference. Yeah, like it actually fit within the scene. And I think because it's live action, like it was able to kind of 
kind of be its own thing but yeah. you can still call it an homage and yeah that i like that i'm like wow what a what a neat shot because it looks cool visually but also what a neat homage it's like yeah. cool you get the best of both worlds exactly uh i also kind of wanted to talk about that one scene where they're hiding from jean jacket right after it devours all those people and it's just raining blood on the yeah. house like that is yeah. such a terrifying scene but also at the same time i couldn't help but remember rejected cartoons like uh, it was like this video on no. uh, youtube where basically this guy made a bunch of like fake ads that were rejected by these fake companies and there's this one where there's a bunch of clouds dancing and then there's one that's going my anus is bleeding and his anus <laughs> starts bleeding <laughs> and, like, and i'm like i can't help but think of that scene from- yeah you know what i've i've i don't think i've seen that but i've definitely seen uh things like that <laughs> you know yeah uh, people it, call it, it sounds like it sounds like something i would have loved as a kid yeah. it, it people call it a precursor to as yeah that's that sounds about right so okay uh was there anything else you wanted to discuss about nope um not particularly no okay so this is once we finish discussing it i usually like to ask myself and obviously the guest you know would you own this on blu-ray and add it to your movie collection um yes yes absolutely yes like it's Definitely my favorite horror movie, which it sounds crazy that Martyrs is still my favorite movie, but it's not my favorite Mm -hmm. horror movie. Um, But, like, I think Nope really just cemented itself by scaring me because I don't usually get scared by horror movies, like, at all. Right. Um, So, yes, I would absolutely buy it. Hell, I want to see it in theaters again. Like, yeah. I really, yeah. really loved Nope a lot. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I only gave it like a 6 out of 10 on Letterboxd, but I could definitely see it rising in score just because I feel like I need to watch it again just so then I can comprehend certain scenes again where I can be like, okay, now I know what's going on. So I, I feel like it could go up. And that's why like I would totally buy this on Blu-ray. I think I need to watch it a couple of times in order to get get it fully but i think it's a good movie i want to keep watching it to figure it out and you know that is all i can ask out of a movie that leaves me confused is that i want to return to it to figure it out someday yeah definitely yeah a good movie for sure um speaking of man-made horrors beyond my (laughs) comprehension let's talk about mirror mask yeah mirror mask so when i asked you onto this episode uh and you suggested mirror mask i was like oh i don't own mirror mask on dvd but i should and so i did i got it and so technically i do own this dvd because so this podcast obviously i like to talk about a movie i don't own and then a movie i do own and so but i do own mirror mask on dvd now i have the dvd here you can hear it Oh, yeah, yep. that's some sweet, sweet mirror mask noises. I can tell I'm such a big <laughs> yeah. mirror mask fan. That if you just yeah. kind of swivel the DVD like a record, I'll be like, yep, that's mirror mask. That's mirror mask, exactly. Um, so for those of you listening who don't know, Mirror Mask is a uh, movie from 2005 uh, produced by the Jim Henson Company and fr- from a, uh, written by Neil Gaiman, who is a very famous writer. Um and it's one of the most terrifying looking movies i've ever seen in my life uh so i remember so the way i came across this movie uh when i first heard about it was obviously me being a big dark crystal fan i remember seeing a triple feature dvd where it had the dark crystal labyrinth and then mirror mask together And I always thought that was interesting because I'm thinking like, oh, does this DVD consider Mirror Mask to be like the third dark children's fantasy movie made by the Jim Henson Company, similar to like Dark Crystal or Labyrinth, where, you know, those movies are dark children's fantasy movies made by the Jim Henson Company. So does that mean Mirror Mask is one of those? And I remember not watching it for years, but then I eventually, I can't remember how i came across it but i remember i was watching it 
between classes in college one day and i watched the whole thing and i was just like what like <laughs> what did i just watch um so how did how did you hear about it uh, um Puff? this is gonna sound really fucking weird uh if you don't actually know how i found out about it but <clears throat> Back in the 2000s, Tokyo Pop released a series of manga, one based on Dark Crystal and one based on Labyrinth, which is the one that I read. And basically mm-hmm. that one follows the story of Toby, who rediscovers the Labyrinth as a teenager, and he has all sorts of hijinks there. Um, but in the back of it, it advertised the Mirror Mask. And I remember okay. that font terrified me. And so I kind of <laughs> just thought, it was like a dormant thought of my eight-year-old brain for years was that's the thing that exists but then in a gravity falls rp server i was in someone brought it up again and i was like oh yeah i remember this i watched the trailer that was cool and when i went to a record store i was browsing around the dvds looking for some stop motion animation movies to pick up and i saw it i immediately grabbed it and it was like two dollars and i was like i found the best thing in my life and i took it home and watched it right away (laughs) Like, I, I still consider it an incredible find for me to just randomly stumble across it in the DVD section of a uh, record store. I mean, it's so obscure it has Thai dubbing. Like, what movie do you own that has Thai dubbing? Oh, I I don't know. I mean, I could look, but I probably not many. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it, it's just such a so it obviously came out in 2005 it's from the jim henson company post jim henson's death but it has a surprisingly I, little amount of puppets i don't think there are any puppets in this movie. i think it's I think all it, cgi i think it is all cgi i think it went the went the way of george lucas and just completely surrounded itself in cgi which leads to a very unique pers- like a very unique visual uh sense to it it looks it doesn't look like any other movie i've ever seen and that's impressive coming from jim henson the jim henson company because they have a lot of uniquely visual movies like i would describe the dark crystal the same way it's a movie that has a visual sense to it that i've never seen in any other movie same with mirror mask uh, for better or for worse. For better or for worse, because a lot of that CGI has aged very poorly. Very, very poorly. It kind of like works to its like benefit and detriment yeah. because like it still adds an it. Ed- How do I put it? While it doesn't look as visually stunning as it could, it adds a sense of the uncanny, which really fits with the world of Mirror Mask. Yeah, like I'm looking at the cover of this DVD, and like in the bottom right corner, you can see like the little sphinx character where like they just cg'd a guy's face over it and it looks terrifying it looks like terrifying oh my god but it's like lo- you can't unremember that sphinx no it's, it's i can't so iconic. i can't i can't it's it's burned into my memory and <laughs> i think what made it even worse is like the fact that he just put his face up against the screen like like the camera really focused in on his face so he's just like yeah I, I I can't remember. I think it was the one who was like telling riddles to yeah uh, Helena. the one that was telling and, riddles yeah and he's just like he's just like tell me a riddle or like I'm gonna tell you a riddle and it's just like oh back away from the camera like <laughs> oh it's so yeah, creepy I, I kind of like that shot though because it's just like yeah so pushy it's like tell me tell me the fucking riddle secret yeah no the it's, answer it's, is it's, secret. It's... <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, such a good deal Caminism. I love it so much. Yeah, it's just so fascinating. Um, but besides the whole visual aspect of the movie, it is a very strangely told story. So a lot of it does remind me of stuff like, like Labyrinth, but also stuff like Alice in Wonderland and Wizard of Oz, where it's about this little girl who's being transported into this other world. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, if we can pause for a second. Uh, the thing that I always thought of when I first watched it, what it reminded me of was Never Ending Story, to be honest. That too, yeah. How it's like, it's just like this fantasy world, this child discovering this fantasy world. Um, and, but it is kind of told in a weird way. So like, you th- so like at the beginning obviously helena and her mother don't get along so you think oh okay that's going to be kind of like the driving force of the movie like 
these two characters like when she goes to the fantasy world i mean when she goes to the, when she does go to the fantasy world the queen is also played by her mother and then the evil queen is played by her mother like it's all the same actress um and then but but then there's also like an anti helena so like there's a helena in the real world who's from the fantasy world so it's like okay is this a dream or is this not a dream and that's where the movie kind of falters in my opinion yeah admittedly that part is a bit confusing i've always kind of seen that dark helena that we see i considered it in a way kind of real like her lashing Mm -hmm. out and trying to cope with her mother's sudden illness right um but yeah it doesn't really clear things up with its ending because the ending acts like nothing's changed at all yeah so that's the other thing that the movie kind of falters in my opinion because when you because like the way that it's set up it's like oh the mother is a bit overbearing and well i mean it starts off with her being like helena you're so selfish and it's like she's selfish for not wanting to work at the circus it's like i mean yeah any kid's just gonna be like can i not be 14 years old and have a job where i'm working at the circus like (laughs) this is too much stress for me it's like yeah (laughs) of course your teenager's gonna like lash out at you yeah of course because it doesn't seem like helena has a lot of friends her age like she just has like the circus folk so like i feel like it's completely valid that she wants to try and join real life yeah but then that kind of makes you question it's like okay then why is helena the main character because I don't think she learns anything by the end. She, like, because she's, like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, like, forced into this life that my parents are forcing upon me. It's, like, okay, that makes sense. But then, like, in turn, she needs to learn a lesson, too. But I don't think the movie sets a lesson up for her to learn. I think it's only that the parents need to learn something. But then at the end... I don't think the mother learns anything because there's never a scene where she's like, Oh, Helena, like I feel bad for forcing you into working at the circus. Like I'll try to be a less overbearing mother. Yeah, no, I I think like there's not, there's no scene where that happens. Yeah. Like it's not there. There's just just back to normal. You see the very important man, Valentine in the real world but then it kind of like the implications of them being in love feel kind of sus because helena is like 15 and he looks like a grown-ass man yeah well that's the other thing is like was there a romance between them because i don't think the movie set that up i feel like they were kind of implying it but it wasn't done very well which is very strange for neil gaiman because he tends to do pretty solid i mean stardust is one of the best romance stories ever told in my opinion so it's kind right. of weird that it wasn't, it was just kind of a one-time mention in Helena's dream, like, oh, you got a boyfriend, and then suddenly, like, yeah, and I'm then supposed then it's to never brought up again. to be together, like. Yeah, like, but again, I always kind of saw Helena and Valentine's relationship as kind of like Sarah and Hoggle's relationship in Labyrinth, where they're just, like, just kind of friends, but, like, again, like, the movie doesn't really establish it all that well. It's like, what, what is this? Like, I don't even understand what's going on. And then at the end, like I was saying, uh, there's the evil queen becomes, like, the giant uncanny face in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Helena's, like, pretty much explaining the theme of the movie, just being like, you can't be an overbearing mother. You gotta let your daughter ha- make her own choices. And... Th- the evil queen's just like have my daughter make her own choices out of the question Lamau. and then that's the and then that's the end of that it's like yeah okay like like why I mean, she wh- does get destroyed by the mirror mask in the end yeah so kind of like what was the point was, of the scene yeah what was, well, what was the point of having like any of these themes to begin with like why set this up and then it goes nowhere like i just i don't understand what the point of that was like i don't it just seems like it it seems like the movie only puts that in there because other movies have done this because like you know labyrinth did that labyrinth had sarah at the beginning act like kind of an entitled bitch but then by the end she kind of learned to not be so uptight and actually 
be responsible for her brother. Whether or not it does that well is up for debate, but, like, it at least established that, and it had her go through an arc, whereas this movie didn't do that. It just set these things up and then didn't do anything with them. So from, like, a storytelling perspective, this movie just kind of doesn't work. Yeah, it's kind of weird how clumsily this movie was constructed when the book of Coraline came out a year earlier. Oh, and, yeah, Or actually Coraline. years earlier, because it came out in 2002, the book, and it handles its themes a lot better than uh, Mirror Mask does. Oh, yeah, I Coraline. wonder if... I, I wonder if it was ever rushed or if it was just something he came up with really quick. Like, they asked, like, yo, can you write us a script real quick? And he was like, okay, sure, this seems like fun. Yeah. Um, or if it was just um, during a slump. Like, because it's so weird to see, com- or how do I put it? It's so weird to compare Mirror Mask to Coraline, which handles a lot of the same themes um, better. Yeah, no, it's great that you mentioned Coraline because that you're exactly right. Like it handles the whole mother daughter not getting along storyline much much better. Like uh, it actually feels like both characters, the mother and Coraline, actually go through arcs and change for the better. So then it's kind of like a mutually exclusive, like or a mutually like coming together. Like oh, we both l- realized we were kind of jerks to each other, but now we're better. Whereas like again mirror mask doesn't do that so then you wonder okay what's the point even I, like it's just it's just such a strange it's such a strange movie and like yeah. you were saying when like human valentine comes in at the end how he's just like oh i always wanted to join the circus it's like okay that was never established but whatever i mean yeah then, it kind of was because wasn't when he was doing earlier kind of a circus performance because oh yeah the juggler about thing. Okay. wanting to uh yeah trying to find a juggler yeah no okay yeah you're, you're right but uh i just i i actually do kind of like the very end how he's just how he he's like i always wanted to join the circus and then she goes great because you'd be a lousy waiter like calling back to his previous scene and then he just goes wait what and then the <laughs> movie just ends yeah i, I love that ending though <laughs> uh, it's it, it it is a very funny ending stinger like and i feel like it kind of encapsulates the whole movie because that's literally what i'm like after i watch it i'm just like wait what and yeah. then it just ends yeah i think yeah because sometimes it's slowly paced and it doesn't handle its themes well but it's just i don't know i just love it so much it's the style is so unique and oh like, yeah the world is so cool that you just can't help but like have such a soft spot for mirror mask yeah and i mean that ties into i have a soft spot for jim henson in general i'm a huge muppet fan i'm a huge dark crystal fan and but even as many problems as i have with mirror mask and as as terrified as i sound with it because it i do find it like egregiously terrifying i'm just (laughs) like oh god like this is scary to look at I kind of respect it for that. Like, I love that it's a movie that looks the way that it does, and it freaks me out in that way. Like, I respect a movie that can freak me out by just the visuals alone. Yeah, no, it's such an eerie-looking film. You can't help but think, who is the target audience for this? Because the story feels like it's meant for children, but the visuals look like some art house adult film. Yeah. Like, or like art house a film for adults, not like it's a porn, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, no, very, um, very much not. Yeah, I actually have a. Funny Although I'm sure story. somebody gets off to this. Oh, probably. But, I actually yeah. have a really funny story about this movie. When I first yeah, go got high for the first time, when I first tried weed, the mm-hmm. first thing I did when I got home, because I was still kind of feeling it, was I turned on Mirror Mask because I needed to know <laughs> what it felt like watching that high. <laughs> And how was it? Um, it was it was pretty it was pretty great. I mean, I watched it high when I watched it this time too. So, <laughs> I mean, like it's just such a it's a pretty movie. Like it's it's terrifying, yeah. pretty, but it's very pretty. So you just like it, it just like kind of enhances it in some ways. Yeah, no, I it's a very strange movie. I'm noticing on the back how it has like the film credits and and I did notice it when I was watching it too. It said and it said designed and directed by Dave McKean. So like the director is credited as designing it. Yeah, I, so I just think that's interesting. Yeah. Actually really quick is the um 
the art style reminds me of the art style for... Yeah! So Dave McKean is a collaborator with um, uh, Neil Gaiman. They've done stuff before. Apparently he's done work for The Sandman. Okay. Um, yeah, he's done art for Sandman. Uh, I wonder if he did the cover art for Coraline, too. Yeah, it definitely looks... Yeah, he did the art for Coraline as well. Okay, Because the cool. art style, I was like, that art style looks really similar to Coraline, and that was correct. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Dave McKean uh, is just, like, his illustrator and comic yeah. collaborator. So that's that's pretty cool to see that they just decided to do a movie together, and that might make sense as to why... Uh, certain things feel rushed because it might just be like a hey you know let's just make a movie <laughs> kind of movie yeah it definitely feels that way but i mean no matter what i just think this is such a fascinating movie whether or not i truly like it i'm fascinated by it and i feel like everybody should watch this at least once yeah Just, definitely I, I would i would prefer i would rather recommend people watch the dark crystal and labyrinth just because i personally think those are great dark fantasy films with great designs i mean labyrinth less so but i still think it's worth checking out i think this is definitely the weakest out of the three whether you want to consider that an unofficial trilogy or not but I still think it's worth watching at least once just to see, like, just to get a feel for, like, how, just how weird and wacky it is. Yeah, like, this is a movie you turn on for the vibes, not for the yes. story. Yes, definitely. So, as for whether I'm keeping this DVD, uh, I am. I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, I also want to mention uh, the copy that I got. Um <laughs> is a it it seems to be a hollywood video rental because it still has the sticker on it that says <laughs> previously viewed movie 12.99 and i just think that's really funny so yeah mine's yeah. not nearly that charming it just has thai dubbing yeah so thai in portuguese yeah so do you own this too yes on, i like, own it as DVD? well uh, okay. and i do not plan on getting rid of it anytime soon i again yeah. i really I really love Mirror Mask. Like, it's not a perfect movie, but I just love that such a weird little movie like this exists in the first place. Exactly, yeah. So, definite keep from me, definite recommendation for me. Uh, was there anything last minute you wanted to say about it before we wrap up? Um, Dark Helena has, like, the sickest taste in fashion, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. Okay, uh, I think that about does it. Puff, uh, I know you said some plugs at the beginning, but uh, why don't you plug your stuff again at the end for anybody who wants to follow you? Yeah, sure. So um, you can follow me on my art Twitter, which is just called One Tough Puff. I forgot to plug my Twitch, which is also called One Tough Puff. Um, you can follow mm -hmm. me on there. I stream games occasionally. It'll probably mostly be Fortnite until Splatoon 3 comes out. Um, <laughs> I also have my shitpost account, uh, The Real 100 Gex, spelled G E X, not like the band, but kind of. <laughs> and uh, you can follow me on there to just hear me screech on the internet. Nice. Yeah, I'll be sure to link all of those in the description below. I know, it's a lot. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'll, it's fine. Um, okay, well, I think that about does it then. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for just finding this video, clicking on it, and hearing us ramble about Nope and Mirror Mask. Two very, very, very scary movies. Um, <laughs> all right. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Just for you, I'm